Hello, and welcome to another episode of Ute Dash, the Utah football show on Dash Sports. I'm Cole Bagley, your host for today's show, and I'm joined by uh, the editor of the Daily Utah Chronicle, my co-host for the show today, Sammy Mora. How are you doing, Sammy? I'm good, Cole. How are you? Oh, another day. Another day, another show. Excited to be here. For sure. So we're just going to jump right into it today. So is Utah, do you think Utah is more of a football school or more of a basketball school, Cole? Oh, I think this is easy. I think it's it's more of a football school. What about you, Sammy? It's football, hands down. There's so many reasons why. Um, I think we all know my stance on Larry Kristoviak as a coach. He just doesn't get it done for me. Utah basketball, I am not. If if someone was like, hey, let's watch, would, you, would you rather watch a Utah football game or a Utah basketball game? I'm going to pick the football game hands down nine times out of ten. They're just more entertaining, and Utah's just – Utah football is just insane, and I love it. Absolutely, Sammy. You know, the the thing for me here is it's a high-level program versus a smaller program. Uh, For the 2019 Utah Athletics report on their uh, revenues, uh, they generated $19 million, the athletic program did. Uh, Utah football accounted for $16 million of the $19 million. And they were up 1.4 million from the previous year, while men's and women's basketball only combined for 2.25 million, and they were down about 400,000 uh, from the previous year. Now, you know, you, you do have to take into account that Rice Eccles is a lot bigger than the Huntsman Center, but you know, they're selling out Rice Eccles Stadium every football game, every home game. You know, that stadium is is, is alive. They're roaring. You know, the mus is there. They're standing the whole game. You know, the alumni are in their seats, they're rocking out, and you just don't get that at the basketball games. Also, the athletic department announced last year that for this upcoming basketball season, they're not even selling tickets for the upper bowl. That says a lot about a basketball program. If you're not even, of your 15,000 person venue, you're cutting off the top half so that no one can sit there, that's not good. I don't think I think Utah fans are more intrigued with the future of Utah football than with Utah basketball. Larry Krasoviak has had some really good recruiting classes. I will give him that. But at the end of the day, he hasn't been able to get a lot done with those recruiting classes. Yep. So, you know, the the probably the best year of his of his coaching career, it was probably back in either 2015 or 2016. You know, he had uh, uh Jakob Pertle and then he had as well Kyle Kuzma, uh two of probably the best players to put on uh, a Utah uniform. But in the last 10 years, uh, the, U- the the basketball program has only made the NCAA tournament twice in the last 10 years. That, that cannot be the case if you're going to be considered a really serious uh, basketball program. And for Utah football, they've been able to be ranked in the top 25 uh, in eight of the last 10 seasons. And, Utah basketball hasn't even cracked the top 25 since 2016. And before that, I believe it was 2009. Yeah. And also look at the draft picks. The basketball team has had three in the last 10 years to Utah football's 39. Now I understand there's a lot more positions that you have to draft for in the NFL. And there's a lot more guys on roster, but still like it's Utah football. Utah's a football school. Utah will be a football school until we can get something turned around, or we could maybe be a hybrid school, maybe be both. That would be fun too. I would love to see a successful Utah football and Utah basketball team. That would be ideal. Yeah. To see something kind of like Oregon's program where, you know, both, both programs are doing extremely well, you know, competing for PAC 12 championships and then, you know, going far uh, inside the NCAA tournament. But I think the, the difference here for me, Sammy is in the coaching staff. You know, you've got Kyle Whittingham, who has just been fantastic in his years uh, as head coach. You know, they were able to really rise to the top of the Mountain West uh, and then joining the Pac-12. You know, it, it, there was a couple – there was a few years that it was a struggle for him, but he has gone above and beyond, risen above, and for the last two seasons has been competing for Pac-12 championships with the football roster, while, you know, Larry, on the other hand, with the, with the uh, basketball program – it's just kind of been a joke for me the last couple of years. I mean, we've had some good players here and there, but several, we lost several players to transfer 
um, this last this last season. And so it it's just it's obvious to me that that something is not right um, with a basketball program, and everything is right with a football program. Yeah, and I also think it it goes back to like you said, Booth Gotch transferred out of the program this year. That was a huge loss for this team. But one thing I will say about Utah basketball is that they exceed my expectations like a, a good chunk of the time because with them not being so hot in the Pac-12, my expectations are usually a little bit lower. So last year they went to Vegas and they beat Kentucky. Blew my mind. That was fantastic. But then as the season went on, it was just let down after let down. And the thing is, is like when Utah football loses, I'm like, I get devastated and distraught. <laughs> but when Utah basketball loses, I, I just kind of shrug it off because we're not a basketball school. We're not known for that. Utah's known for putting running backs, defensive linemen, and secondary players into the NFL. We're not known for putting the next great forward into the NBA. Well, it just makes me question the recruiting program for basketball because, you know, Kyle has, Kyle Whittingham has gone out and, and he's dug, you know, he's found, and we've touched on this in previous shows, you know, he's found, he's found the three stars and some two stars and he's turned those guys into phenomenal players and even players that have gone to the next level and played in the NFL and the basketball program. I mean, three draft picks in, in the last 10 years, opposed to the 39 the football is produced and we had seven last year with, with five free agent signings uh, with football, you know, hands down, Sammy, I think it's easy to say the university of Utah is, is a football school. Yeah. And going with recruiting is Larry, Larry loves to get those flashy four and five star recruits. He loves that. Um, But also look, Utah lost one of those four and five star recruits this year. He got out of his NLI and now he goes to BYU. So if you can't keep if you can't keep recruits in your program, if you can't keep players on the court, you're not going to be able to win games. Yeah, I mean, the guy did have to cut his hair to go to BYU and Utah did beat BYU this last year. So we'll think we'll see how things turn out. But, uh, you know, BYU uh, historically has had just a better uh, program, you know, in the last 10 years or so. And they they did the right thing. They uh, you know, they got rid of a coach that had been there for a while that um, had produced some good seasons, but they understood that everything has its season. It was his time to leave. And they replaced him with, I believe it was the Utah Valley university head coach. Mm -hmm. It's time for the basketball program to do that. Now they're, they are in some financial issues. It would be tough to get rid of Larry as of right now, but I am hoping that as soon as his contract is up, they're starting over They're you know, uh, starting from scratch and, we, we do see maybe football and basketball start to level out a little bit, but I will say I would much rather have the University of Utah be a football school than a basketball school, and I think that's what we've got here. Yeah, U- Utah football is the moneymaker here. Um, Utah football brings in the bread. It, it, we, have more, we have notoriety in the football world. It's not as big as schools like USC or Oregon, but we still have that notoriety. Utah is known for being one of the original BCS busters, that's something that's huge. And until the basketball t- program can like actually make a huge impact and make it to the tournament and make a run in the tournament, I don't think this is even like an, it's not even an argument. It's Utah's a football school. Utah could also be considered a gymnastic school. I'm just throwing that out there. Oh, I think you have every reason to throw that out there, Tammy. <laughs> um, but just one last thing here on, on this subject People, I don't think people really understand how much football means to the University of Utah, to, to, to Utah fans. Um, it, the University of Utah is almost like an NFL team. They almost have like an NFL following as far as the state of Utah goes. People love the Utes. You know, they, they show up in, in, with their faces painted and, you know, the, the alumni are, are constantly, you know, uh, re-signing their, their season tickets. And it's just, it's a fantastic venue. And I don't think Utah football gets enough respect, but they are a football school. And so one of the reasons I think they are a football school, Sammy, is because they are a running back university. And uh, would you, would you agree with that, Sammy? Utah is the running back you hands down. There's no, there's, there's a couple of schools, but in the, like, 
not in the Pac-12 that you could make an argument for. But in the Pac-12, Utah is the running back university. Um, we've had three three guys drafted in the last like five years that are all in the NFL playing football. That speaks volume. Oh, it, it completely does. And again, I think Utah, What one of the things I love most about the University of Utah is I feel like they kind of go under the radar in, in a lot of ways. You know, people don't think, well, I think when people from outside the Pac-12 think of the Pac-12, you know, they think of USC, they think of Oregon, they might think of Stanford and UCLA. I think Utah kind of flies under the radar, but Utah has been one of the top competitors for you know the last couple of years especially the last two years and just a, a notable statistic that i don't think very many people are aware of over the past six years the utah running backs have had a player from the backfield rush for over a thousand yards each season those are coveted yards that's a tough thing to do uh, at the collegiate level is to have someone rushing and so sammy tell us a little bit about some of these guys that have just been absolutely eating up those yards for the Utes. Yeah, so you start off in 2015, the 2015 season with Devontae Booker, fantastic running back for the U. He ended up getting drafted by the Broncos in the fourth round. He is one of just two Utah players to ever record back-to-back 1,000-yard -back rushing seasons. That's insane. He finished third in his career in rushing yards with 2,773 fourth in career carries with 560 and tied for sixth in career rushing touchdowns with 21. And he also set the school record for a career rushing average of 120.6 yards. That, that is the start of a fantastic like lineage of running backs that Utah had. Then that can continues on with Joe Williams. The next year he's drafted by the 49ers in the fourth round. He rushed for 1,001, 1,884 yards in his time at Utah, 13 touchdowns. Those are good numbers. He had 800-yard rushing games and 19 total career games played. If eight, eight of your 19 games are 100-yard games, that's really good. Utah you're winning, and Utah, football. You're, winning, you're probably winning those games. Yeah, and like Utah has established themselves as a run-first school. And this setting these like running backs up and giving them these kind of careers and these games – to be able to break these records is what sets them out as running back you. Kyle McDonald is a fantastic coach. He is so good with these running backs. He's able to get them, get them going. We always have a good offensive line to help get them moving. Utah has no – There's Stanford's probably the closest one you could say that produces the level and the quality running backs in the Pac-12. But it's Utah because also you can't even – you can't talk about running backs in Utah without talking about Zach Moss the all-time leading rusher in school history. 2020, or this year, drafted by the Bills in the third round. He broke six records last season alone. That is insane. It's hands down so, so magnificent what these running backs can do when they go to Utah. And Utah is really good about bringing in good running backs and getting them into the system. Jordan Wilmore is going to be one of the best running backs in Utah football history This like that's on roster right now. Same with Devin Brumfield. It's hands down Utah. There's no way you cannot, you could make an argument for anyone else. Well, it's, it's again that under the radar stuff and what has made Kyle Whittingham so successful as, as the head coach uh, of, of the program is he's able to find these guys who are three-star recruits. You know, I mean, especially Zach Moss, coming in, Sammy, correct me if I'm wrong, three-star recruit mm -hmm. and turning him into just an absolute beast, a guy that put up crazy numbers and was a steal in the 2020 NFL draft. And, you know, looking at the Pac-12 historically, I'd say, you know, maybe about 10 years ago, you know, Oregon was spitting out some pretty phenomenal running backs. And then Stanford with, with McCaffrey, I mean, that guy is just on another level, but recently Utah has been the guys that have been producing, you know, the the great runners, the the running backs that that you can count on, um, that you know are going to pick up yards, especially over the last few seasons with Zach Moss. I I couldn't get enough of him. Potentially my all time favorite player that has, uh, you know, worn the drum and feather, and he he is just um, the product of a great system. And Utah is a running back program. Yeah, and 
like I've said, these Utah gets these good running backs, these three, these these three star kids, and puts them in, and put them into this program, and gets them going and gets them these yard and gets them in the game, and they get the feel of the game, and they start to produce good plays. And also, Utah's not known for just one type of running back. You have. Zach Moss was a very different runner than Devin Brumfield, who was a very different runner than Jordan Wilmore, who is very different than TJ Green. All of the running backs at Utah are different and are known for specific things. So you can't say that Utah is just like a running back factory where you just put in one and it comes out this, like each running back comes out the same way. They're all different because Zach Moss is a human freight train. It takes three or four guys to take him down. He's so big and so powerful that it's so hard to tackle him. But TJ Green, on the other hand, he's more of a speedster. Like, he's going to be able to get out on the outside and get around. So Utah's not, like, just producing the same type of back over and over. Yeah, you know, and, and something else to point out is the university finds guys that are locked in long term. You know, I think Zach Moss is the best, and we keep touching on him. I'm sorry, guys. I just – I love the guy. He had every opportunity last season – to potentially go to the NFL draft, maybe fall a couple rounds. Um, and, but he'd still, I believe he still would have made it. But the guy said himself that he had unfinished business. He came back to Utah. He broke the record. He's the all time rusher. His name, you know, is, is etched in the history books at Utah. And it helped boost his stock. And he went as high as he did. And he's going to be, he could potentially be you know, a franchise player for the Bills. You know, you could be seeing a lot of people wearing Moss jerseys here in the next couple of years. Yeah. And you got you to gotta respect him because he could have just said, okay, I'm going to forego my senior season and go to the NFL. But he believed in this team. He believed in what they could do. And he came back and he did it. Unfinished business was the senior class's motto for the entire year. And they had that unfinished business. They got a taste of what it was like being in the Pac-12 championship game. And it got crushed by Washington. And yes, it got crushed again by Oregon this like last season. But still, they were able to do it back-to-back years. That kid has some dedication and some determination. And also, he was just a great leader. The guys on the team loved him. They respected him. Um, he basically took Jordan Wilmore underneath his wing, if from what I've heard from the team is correct, that he basically is, was making him a protege to make him the next great running back at Utah. And it's it's not just about coaching. It's about the guys before you. They're setting these examples. Joe Williams walked away from football and then came back and then laid the hammer down on UCLA in his first game back. These running backs are special at Utah. Yep, and it's what makes the, the program so special. And I, and I hope that uh, producing these guys is going to help them continue to find – uh, running backs like this you know we've had some some decent quarterbacks over the years I mean I think especially with the last few years and Tyler Huntley um, but it seems to me the running back game is always just top notch and uh, hopefully he'll be able to continue um, that with the uh, that with the program so it looks like we do have a question from the live chat uh, how do you think the Utes would do against Navy if they were playing football Sammy I'm going to go go ahead and let you tackle this one first I'm not a fan of the triple option. Um, most people know that when I talk about it because it's just it's the triple option is kind of boring in my opinion. But here's the thing. Utah would if we're talking about the Navy team that played BYU on Monday, I think Utah would have been able to handle them. This that Navy team was not tackling in practice, hadn't tackled in months. Utah is a would be able to manhandle them. Utah's a very physical team. So I think Utah would have been able to handle Navy. I, you don't have to worry about the secondary being an issue because Navy's not going to throw the ball that much at you. So I think Utah would easily beat Navy. Oh, yeah. I mean, a team that loses to BYU, that's not going to be an issue for the University of Utah. Not even close, especially with the offensive weapons that, that Utah has. We would have been running all over those guys all day and probably would have been passing all over them too with Jake Bentley and you know Keithy, as big as he is. He just runs straight through those guys. Um, so I, I don't think it would have been much of an issue. Um, sure. We do appreciate, appreciate the questions. We hope to keep them coming. But, Sammy, let's move on to um, our last topic for today. 
a dream non-conference schedule for Utah. But we're we're going to have some parameters here, Sammy. So let's say we have to do an A, B, and C level game. Uh, the A game has to be Power Five Blue Blood program. Uh, the B game uh, can be you know something a little bit lower, maybe an independent, something like that. And the C game just a D- Division Two or another school. So, uh, Sammy, what do you got there? So I'm going to start with my C game, and I'm going to work my way up. So okay. I'm going to start with my C game. I'm going to go with Weber State. Um, Weber State is a it's a prominent team in the in the uh, Division Two ranks. There, Jay Hill has set up a fantastic team there in Weber, and I just love to see Weber. I love Weber. I want to support Weber, but I want Utah to beat Weber. And I think that that would be a good warm-up game for the Utes to deal with. Because, you know, there's always those first game issues you always have where something doesn't happen right or your offense isn't looking as good or your defense is slipping up a little bit. So I think Weber would be a really good place to just fine-tune some things. My B game, I'm going to go BYU. They're a B-level opponent, in my opinion. You have to play those guys again? You have to. You have to. Because last time we didn't play BYU, there was an audit called against the university. (laughs) So you have to play BYU just for the rivalry. Also, as much as I like to talk trash on BYU, I love that game. That game is so much fun because you never know what's going to happen with it. So I think BYU is going to be my B-level game. And I think my dream A game for Utah is Notre Dame. So Utah played Notre Dame only once, and it was in 2010, and we got throttled. It was 28-3 to was the final score of that game. I think it would be fantastic to get them here at Rice-Eccles. That would be a fun game. That would be fu- It would be loud. It would be passionate. It would be so good. A nice third game of the season. Give me Notre Dame. Give me Utah. <laughs> At, at the Eccles. Oh, yeah. Give, yeah. At Red. At the Rice Eccles. Let's do it. Oh, abs- yeah, absolutely, Sammy. Those, that, that is a great schedule. Um, you know, I think Utah played Weber State uh, two seasons ago, and uh, I actually was at that game. Uh, Weber State was up 14 to nothing. Um, I get a text from my dad. He's like, oh, what's going on? And I'm like, hold your horses. Give it a minute. You know, give it some time. They got to warm I, up. They got to warm up. Yeah. Yeah, they got to think. They got to let the other team think they have a chance. And I think they rolled the Wildcats like forty-eight, fourteen. I don't think Weber State scored again. Yeah, and um, that's the thing is, is with Weber State is like you're, they're gonna score. That's the thing is, is Weber State's one of those D two schools that's gonna put up the points, but the, it's not gonna be enough. Yeah, but it's you know as far as lower level schools, I think they've got a respectable program, and it's good for you know for them to to play one of the play one of their big brothers in state, you know, see kind of see where they're at. Um, I think that's, that's a great game. BYU, like you said, Sammy, it's special. It's a special game. You know, it just, it brings a fantastic energy, whether you're at Lavelle Edwards or you're at the superior rice echo stadium, you know, it just, it's just special because no matter how good the teams are, no matter if one's ranked, one's not, it's usually close. Now there's been some blowouts, mostly on the Utah side, blowing BYU out, but you know, it, it just creates a great atmosphere. And then Notre Dame, I I would pick Notre Dame as well for my for my A game, Sammy, because th- just a h- historically great program with uh, a great set of, of fans and following and tradition. And it would be fun to welcome the Irish and to see just how the Utes would do against them. I think it would be a great matchup. Yeah. And just hopping back to Weaver State really fast is also there's a connection there with Jay Hill. Jay Hill coached with Whittingham. They have that camaraderie. It would be fantastic just to get us to play Weaver again. I think Weaver actually does show up on Utah's schedule, non-conference schedule, down the line a little bit. But if we're talking dream, like Weaver State, BYU, and Notre Dame. Definitely a solid schedule. Now, Sammy, here, here's mine. So starting with the C game, uh, Dixie State. And – simply because it's an in-state foe that I'm not sure Utah has faced recently or at all. Um, you know, they, but I, I did see that they, it looks like they've signed a uh, schedule to play in uh, 2028 and 2030. Uh, that'll be exciting. And I think again, it's just, it's a good opportunity to invite some of those, you know, smaller schools in state, you know, let your guys kind of throw them around, see where there might be holes. And it gives them a good opportunity, you know, Mm-hmm. Uh, moving on from there, as much as I'd like to see BYU, a game that I wanted to see for the last, last couple of years is a game against the Aggies. 
Uh, and the reason for that is there are too many Utah State fans that think that Utah State is the best program in the state, and I don't know why that is. Uh, you know, they, they've been a lot better in recent years. I will give them that. You know, Utah State used to be on a level of a Weber State or a Dixie State, but they've since really upgraded their program. The coaching staff's gotten a lot better. Um, Utah versus Utah State, it's 79 to 29 in favor of Utah. The longest streak is 12 for Utah, and Utah has won the last two games. I think this will be great. Invite them uh, to Rice Eccles, give them a pounding, show them who Big Brother is, and send them on their way back up to Logan. Uh, moving on to my A game. We, I'm going to take a little bit of inspiration here from some BYU fans, and and uh, we want Bama. Give us <laughs> Alabama. The rematch of the 2009 Sugar Bowl, Utah upset Alabama 31 to 17. Utah with 349 yards to Bama's 208. Utah had uh, more first downs, 22 first downs to Bama's 15, and it capped off a 13 and 0 season. Um, and the reason that I would, I think it would be fantastic to have Alabama would be Utah often finds themselves playing to the level and rising to the occasion of their opponent. And, you know, with, I mean, that game against Alabama, the sugar bowl is, is the a great example of that. Uh, and then with the back-to-back games in 2014 and 2015 against Michigan, you know, Michigan invites Utah to Michigan to be one of those games that, you know, you kind of test things out, you know, you get the crowd sold out and, and you kind of show them how good you're going to be. And Utah kicks the crap out of them 26 to 10. And I think they paid them like $3 million to come and do it. And they ended up losing. And then the next year, Michigan shows up to Rice Eccles and loses 24, 17. In what the coaching staff called a cupcake game. Uh, everything, but, um, and then uh, Utah versus TCU, uh, 2008. Uh, I think Johnson was the quarterback then um, as well. Yeah, that was the same season, I yeah. think. Um, blackout game, and they win in a cr- in crazy fashion over TCU. Both teams ranked, I think, in the top 15. I think Utah was 8 and TCU was 12. Um, something along those lines, I believe so. Uh, but just Utah rises to the occasion. And I think it would be great to, uh, you know, go down to Alabama, you know, have them thinking, you know, hey, this is one of our first couple games. This should be a quick and easy one and just repeat the Sugar Bowl. That, that to me, would be a fantastic outcome. I do think that they Utah could swing it to get a home-and-home with Alabama. I think they could. Just for the fact that Nick Saban – would love to roll up to Rice Eccles and beat Utah just to get basically revenge because when they played in the Sugar Bowl, that's basically a home game for Alabama. That was a home game based on proximity alone. So if you get Alabama into Rice Eccles, you're gonna you know that's gonna be a sellout first oh, and foremost. That's sure. a sellout. You can get it on national TV. You're, that's that's fantastic. That's good TV. That's good football. That would be fan. That would be great. I'd love that. Yeah, I think it would be a lot of fun um, for both organizations. You know, Nick Saban, I think, is a guy that holds grudges, and I think he needs to uh, see if uh, if his team can actually beat Utah this time. Um, but yeah, that, that's that's my schedule there. Dixie State, Utah State, Alabama. But same, I think yours is is fantastic as well with Weber State, BYU. That's an easy W. And Notre Dame, that 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 and Alabama were the two that I was thinking of um, when when trying to come up with that. So I also was tossing around getting like another Big Twelve game because having a taste of Utah versus Texas, as disappointing as it was in the Alamo Bowl. I liked it. And Utah does have Utah does have Baylor on their schedule coming up in the next couple of years. So that's going to be a really intriguing game. But also Utah Oklahoma, that would be a good game too. Mm-hmm. Utah Oklahoma because you got two high-powered offenses and then Oklahoma is like depending on the year a good defense. So Well, it, uh, you know, we'll see a couple of these games here in the future, you know, BYU uh, you know, it's, it's a game that we always see Utah state. Hopefully we'll see something soon. And then Dixie state a little bit far off, maybe 
Sammy, we can dream for Alabama and Notre Dame, uh, but we'll have to see. But that's all the time we have for today. Uh, we want to thank you for joining us on Ute Dash. Please don't forget to follow us on social media, on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Dash Sports TV. Also check out our website, dashboards.tv. Uh, we'll see you all next week. And as always, Sammy, go, go Utes. Utes.